Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School, April 25, 2021. The title of our Sunday School lesson, The Nation's Plea, Ang Panalangin ng Sambayanan. Background Scripture, Lamentations, Chapter 5. Our Sunday School material is the NIB Standard Lesson Commentary. If you want a copy of the PowerPoint, my email and my cell phone number is there. Or you can ask the office. All the previous uh, lessons are available in the office or in the Facebook and in YouTube. Let's start with the prayer. Lord, we will be studying Lamentations chapter 5. The sorrow, the pain of Israel when they were conquered by Babylon. Help us to learn our lesson. Help us that through this we will grow in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so here at a glance, we started our online Sunday school in July. We are finishing our 10th month. And all of these are available in the office. You can ask the office for a copy. The first quarter, God's world and God's people. And for three months, we were talking about Genesis. Second quarter, our love for God, call in the New Testament. And today we are in the third quarter for the month of uh, March, April, May. The theme is prophets faithful to God's covenant. Next quarter, it will be confident hope. Quarter at a glance, March, April, May. 1,000 years of prophets and prophetic leadership. So we have been talking of these prophets. It starts in 1447 or 1507 BC, 1500 BC, the time of Moses. Joshua, Elijah, Micaiah, Badiah, Jonah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Old Ezekiel, and then Nehemiah, 400 BC. So it's a 1,000 years of prophetic leadership, prophets and prophetic leadership. Today, we are in lesson 8. I mark it that. And the significance of this day is the, the fall of the southern tribe to Babylon, 586 BC. I also uh, mark this uh, Moses. 400 or 1500 BC because we will be looking back at the writings from Deuteronomy from Exodus and between this you can see it's about 900 years okay March we are through with this these are the topics that we have taken up Joshua Moses Joshua Hulda Obadiah Elijah Today we are in April and we are in the last week of April. The Nation's Plea, Lamentations, Chapter 5. For the month of May, the theme will be Courageous, Courageous Prophets of Change. And we will be we will have all these topics next starting next week. So Lamentations 5. We are in chapter 5. There are only 5 chapters in the book of Lamentations. 5 points. Jeremiah is a poet. And so we will read this like a poem. Remember, Lord, what has happened to us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers. Our homes 
to foreigners. We have become fatherless. Our mothers are widows. We must buy the water we drink. Our wood can be had only at a price. Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are weary and find no rest. We submitted to Egypt and Assyria to get enough bread. Our ancestors seen and are no more, and we bear their punishment. Slaves rule over us, and there is no one to free us from their hands. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the desert. Our skin is hot as an oven, feverish from hunger. Women have been violated in Zion and virgins in the towns of Judah. Princes have been hung up by their hands. Elders are shown no respect. Young men toil at the millstones. Boys stagger under loads of wood. The elders are gone from the city gate. The young men have stopped their music. Joy is gone from our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Because of this, our hearts are faint. Because of these things, our eyes grow dim for Mount Zion, which lies desolate with jackals prowling over it. You, Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. Why do you always forget us? Why do you forsake us so long? Restore us to yourself, Lord, that we may return, renew our days as of old, unless you have utterly rejected us and are angry with us beyond measure. Sa Tagalog, Panaghoy, Kapitulo 5 Gunutain mo, Yahweh, ang nangyari sa amin. Malasin mo ang sinapit naming kahihiyan. Ang aming manay binigay sa mga dayuhan at ang aming mga tahanan na may ipinagkaloob sa mga tagaibang bayan. Ang aming mga ama pinatay ng mga kaaway kaya balo ang aming mga ina. Kailangang bayaran namin ang tubig na aming iinumin pati ang panggatong ay aming binibili. Pinagtrabaho kaming parang mga hayop, hindi, la, hindi man lamang pinagpapahinga. Para magkaroon ng sapat na pagkain, ay halos magpalimus kami sa Egypto at Assyria. Nagkasala ang aming mga magulang, at ngayong wala na sila ay kami ang nagdurusa. Mga alipin ang namamahala sa amin, Walang makapagligtas sa amin mula sa kanilang mga kamay. Nalalagay sa panganib ang aming buhay sa paghahanap ng makakain dahil sa aming mga kaaway. Dahil sa matinding gutom, nag-aapoy ang aming katawan para kaming nakalagay sa pugon. Ang aming mga may bahay ay ginahasa sa siyong. Ang mga dalagay pinagsasamantalahan sa mga bayan ng kuda. Ginagapos at ibinibitin ang mga pinuno. Hindi na pinakukundanganan ng matatanda. Ang mga batang lalaki pinagigiling na parang alipin. Nakukuba sa bigat ng pasan nilang kahoy ang aming mga batang lalaki. Ayaw nang magpulong ang matatanda ng bayan. Ayaw nang tumugtog ng mga kabataan. Na para mang kagalangan sa aming puso. Ang aming pagsasaya ay naging pagdadalang hati. Walang nalalabi sa aming ipinagmamalaki. Tayo'y nagkasala at ngayon'y nagdurusa. Nanlupaypay kami at nagdilim ang aming paningin. Pagkat iniwan ng tao ang kundok ng siyon. Mga asong bubat na lamang ang naninirahan doon. Ngunit ikaw, O Yahweh, ang hari magpakailanman na nanatili sa lahat ng salin lahi ang iyong luklukan. Kahit tagal mo kaming 
pinabayaan. Kailan mo kami aalalahanin uli? Ibalik mo kami sa dating kaugnayan sa iyo. Talaga bang itinakwil mo na kami? Suktulan na bang talaga ang galit mo sa amin? Key verse, Lamentations 5.21 Restore us to yourself, Lord, that we may return. Renew our days as of old. Okay, so what should we learn? After participating in this lesson, each learner will be able to describe the historical context of the Book of Lamentations. Titignan natin kung ano nangyari. Kaya kanina, pinakikita ko sa inyo yung references doon sa Book of Exodus, Book of Deuteronomy, at kung ano yung sinabi ng Diyos doon at kung ano ang nangyari sa kanila, walong daan siyam na ran after those uh, the books of Deuteronomy after Moses historical context summarize the reasons for the people's mourning makita natin yung pighati yung sakit, yung pait yung lungkot dapat kayang kaya natin summarize yan bakit bakit sila nalulungkot bakit sila nag, nag, nananaghoy Lament having sinned against God. The third aim is for is a challenge for each and every one of us. Malungkot tayo kung tayo ay nagiging disobedient sa Panginoon. Malungkot tayo at dalhin natin sa Panginoon ang ating kalungkutan na ito ay dahilan dahil sa ating pagkakasala nang sa ganon ay magkaroon ng mas malapit mas a closer relationship with God okay lesson outline uh, we have an introduction in memory of then the lesson context the lesson context is the bigger picture where this event is taken up so we look at the the bigger picture so we understand a full comprehension of the event. Roman numeral number one, confrontation. The, the plea to God, bringing to God the pain, the mourn, etc. Telling to God, telling God what is happening. Roman numeral number two, confession. Confession, asking mercy. Repent and asking mercy. And then the conclusion is called to lament and taught to remember. Okay, so introduction tayo in memory of. Sabi ng author, sabi ng author, ito yung tanong ng author ng ating uh, lesson. When is the last time you heard sermon or lesson from the book of Lamentations? Huh. Totoo ito, I can relate with this question personally. Mukhang absent ako nung may sermon sa lamentation. Parang wala nga akong matandaan. Ba, hindi masyadong pinag-uusapan. Why? Dahil we, they prefer to talk on happier moments. Joyful worship. Even in personal devotional time, lamentation is often bypassed in favor or almost anything. We don't like to dwell on pain which is what lamentations does. Lamentations is from the Greek word tears, luha. Lamentation, others say cry to God. So it's pain, it's mourning. But remembering tragedy as important as that is, isn't the only purpose of lamentation. The book can also teach us much about our relationship with God. Maaring merong malalim na maaaral tayo dito, matututunan tayo dito. Especially dun sa ating ugnayan sa Diyos, our relationship with God. Okay, lesson context. The book of Lamentations reflects the period 586 to 538 BC. 
Ayan. 586 to 538 B.C. 586, ano yun? 586 B.C. That is the fall of the southern tribe to Babylon. And after that, hanggang 538 B.C., under the clutches of Babylon, lahat ng parusa, lahat ng pahirap na under. In 538 B.C., ano nangyari? Well, King Cyrus per- Persia defeated Babylon, 538. Yeah. Assyria defeated the, south, the northern tribe in 722 B.C. Jeremiah, the writer now, the author of Lamentations is Jeremiah. The writer had been warning Judah for many years that God's judgment was coming. Tagal! But take note, the warning given came from the book of Moses. So Exodus, so Deuteronomy, we will be looking at this in a little while. As instrument of God's wrath, the Babylon destroyed. You see here, as instrument of God's wrath, plano ng Diyos ito. Ginamit ng Diyos ang Babylon para parusahan ang Jerusalem, ang Judah sa kanilang maraming kasalanan. Many who were left alive were carried into exile. The weak and the poor were left to contend. Yan. Yung mga malalakas, the royal family, the soldiers, yung mga nobles, yung mga educated, in exile sila lahat sa Babylon. Ang mga naiwan doon sa, sa Jerusalem, sa Judah, ay yung mga weak, poor, weak and poor. Yun, yung mga dati ng mahina, yung mga walang wala nang silbi, sila yung mga naiwan doon sa Jerusalem, sa Judah. Okay, so Lamentations, five chapters are, are five chapters of Lamentations. Do not shy away from describing the devastation. Yung five chapters, talagang very frank, very truthful, lahat ng mga nakikitang kapaitan, lahat ng sakit na nararanasan nila, lahat ng pigati, dina, dinulog nila sa Panginoon. Lack of food resulted in starvation and cannibalism. Those who did not die by the sword were weak. Biruin nyo to. Namamatay sa gutom. Walang makain. Ang ginagawa ng mga ina, pinapukuloan na lang yung anak nila at yun ang kinakain. Ganyang kalupit itong lamentations. The first four chapters are all acrostics. Point kasi ito, limang points. Uh, lamentations are five points. Five chapters. And they are acrostics. Acrostics, acrostics. A, B, C, D, E, kung English. But, The, the Hebrew letters, uh, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So, yung, yung mga, itong mga points na to, ay, it was prepared in acrostic form. So, first verse, letter A. Second verse, letter, nag-umpisa sa letter B. Third verse, C, D, E, F. Acrostic, kumbaga sa English. So, chapters 1, 2, and 4, strictly acrostics. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So therefore, each of these, each of these uh, chapters, 1, 2, and 4, 22 verses. 22 verses yan. Chapter 4 is an exception. Acrostic pa rin, but it is three times. So, 66 verses, but it is still acrostic. Now, our lesson, which is Lamentations 5, does that have acrostic pattern. Intentional. Pinapaliwanag ng author na intentional yung paggawa ni, ng, ni Jeremiah nito. Why? To drive a point. Parang to show yung ebbing portion, yung nawawala ng kayamanan, nawawala ng uh, uh, pangarap, nawawala ng kinabukasan ng, ng, ng bansang Judah, ng Jerusalem. For all their cries to God, no help seemed to be forthcoming. 
Kaya intentional kung bakit. Although it is still a point, it is still 22 verse, but it's not using acrostic pattern anymore. Ito yung lesson natin. At yun yung picture. Mukhang tinuluyan na silang tinalikuran ng Diyos. Okay, so now let's go to our lesson. Roman numeral number one, confrontation. Remember, Lord, what has happened to us. Look and see our disgrace. Remember, what has happened to us. Look and see. Parang mayroong ini-emphasize yung yung oso na huwag mo kaming talikuran. What has happened to us? Wala kaming kinalaman dito. Wala kaming kinalaman dito. Etc. The author explains that Jeremiah's use of characteristic Hebrew repetition, piling up, etc. etc. Huh? It is a Hebrew point to emphasize a point. To emphasize a point. The full account of the pain of the people. Yun yung pinaka gustong i-drive ng, ng, ni Jeremiah. To show the full account of the pain of the people. Look, see, remember. Putting these three birds together conveys a sense of urgency. Ito talagang mamamatay na emergency, etc. etc. God, come on! You have to act without delay. It's urgent. It's emergency. What has happened to us? Yung phrase, no? what has happened to us? They are saying, they, they are saying, hindi naman namin kasalanan nito, kasalanan nito ng mga ninuno namin, etc., etc. Kami ang passive recipients. Hindi kami ang talagang nagumpisa nito, etc. Yun ang sinasabi sa first verse. But the people's circumstances were because of their sins, not my twist of faith. <laughs> eh, pero, ito naman ang sabi ngayon ng author. As was mentioned in chapter 1, and in chapter 4, and chapter 3 of the book of Lamentations. It revealed the whole story. Ano bang sinasabi dyan? Lamentations 1.5 Because of her many sins. Because of her many sins. Verse 2. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers. Our homes to foreigners. Inheritance. It pertains to God's promise to Abraham that he will inherit Canaan, the promised land. And the promised land will be inherited to the descendants and the descendants and descendants of Abraham. But, take note, it's no longer true. It is now being given to foreigners. Yeah, the inheritance, promised land to Abraham, etc., etc. We can see that in Genesis chapter 15. And the faithfulness of God will continue to Abraham's descendants. Yun yung inheritance. Hindi mawawala. In fact, in fact, daming batas. And these are... Uh, Ayan, basahin mo natin ito. The whole land of Canaan, where you are now, I will give us an everlasting possession to you and your descendants. After you, and I will be their God. Well, that is the covenant. I will be their God. That is the covenant. Everlasting yan. But, take note, there will be a covenant. In Lamentations, it appears that God is Dropping the covenant. He is turning away. Hindi na siya faithful sa covenant. Mukhang niya ng itsura. Let's go back to the word inheritance. Let's go back to the word inheritance. Siniguro, sinisiguro ng Diyos na hindi mawawala ang inyong inheritance. God ordained safeguards para hindi mawawala itong inheritance. Ito, ano yung mga God ordained safeguards? May mga batas sila. May mga batas. Yung lupa Pagkatapos, i-distribute sa Simeonite, Benjaminites, Judah, etc., etc. Within the family, pag ibebenta mo yung lupa, dapat ibenta mo sa 
kapatid mo, para hindi mo wala sa pamilya. Wala na, di dun sa katribo mo, but never outside your tribe. At kapag kata, pagdating ng Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, ang lupa ay babalik, hindi mawawala yung inheritance, and that is a God-ordained safeguard. Ano ngayon ang nangyari? Ni hindi nga sa kapatid eh. Hindi nga dun sa, hindi nga dun sa katribo eh. Hindi nga dun sa Israelites na iba eh. But to non-covenant people. This is the very painful. Talagang mukhang tumalikod na nga ang Diyos. Bakit yung inheritance ay napunta na sa mga non-Israelites? We have become fatherless. Our mothers are widows. Yeah, orphans. Fatherless. You see that? Kaya kung sinasabi palagi, doon, sa panahon ni Moses, it was written, Exodus 22, some 800 years, 900 years before, my anger will be aroused and I will kill with a sword. Your wives will become widows and your children fatherless. This was pronounced by God. Long, long time, they were warned of what is happening today. Verse 4, we must buy the water we drink, or wood can be had only at a price. The sustenance, yung tubig binibili, ha? yung kawi binibili. This was not the case before. How was the promised land described? Overflowing with milk and honey. Yung, yung mga abundance, it talks about abundance, pero ngayon, I wrote that. It is a question of sustenance. Having to buy these resources from the invaders emphasizes that the, the land was no longer controlled by Judah. Hindi na kontrolado ng mga Israelita ang lupa. It suggests that God had abandoned the covenant. Oh, very painful. God, it appears that God had abandoned. Bakit hindi na kontrolado ng covenant people? Young Israel. Now again, the history, Deuteronomy, let's see. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God, all these curses will come upon you. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. This was the warning of God in the time of Moses. And this is about 800, 900 years later. Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are weary and find no rest. Hindi na sila makapagpahinga. God, there is a commandment from God in Exodus. He commands that there will be a rest day, rest on the Sabbath day. However, ito ngayon yung situation The force, the instrument which God used to teach them, forced them to break that command. Pero yun yun, iniutos ng Diyos, pero yung inutosan ng Diyos para disiplinahin, i-judge itong Israelitas, ay sinasabi, ah, huwag niyong sundin yung sinasabi ng Diyos. Another evidence of God's abandonment. God's distance and abandonment. This is very painful. Verse 6, we submitted to Egypt and Assyria to get enough bread. Yan, nagmamakaawa sila, namamarli mo sila sa Egypto at Assyria para sa tinapan. It's a desperate move. You to beg from antagonistic nations. Kaaway nila dami. Di ba? These are the consequences of Babylonian conquest. Walang pagkain. The fields have been devastated. Walang pagkain. Lalong walang ulam. Tinapay na lang sana. Okay na kahit walang ulam. Ito, kahit tinapay, wala. Eh. Our ancestors sin and are no more and we bear their punishment. <laughs> Ito sinasabi, Tingnan mo naman, hindi naman namin itong kasalanan. 
Pumalik ka na sa amin, Panginoon. Yan ang panalangin. But let us just see the background, the Bible background. In many places, the Bible affirms that each person suffering for his or her are his or own room doing. Yan, may mga example na kaya pinaparosahan dahil yung mga tang nagkasala, sila yung pinarurosahan. Yan, may mga example sa Bible. Example ay Sodom and Gomorrah. Alam natin yung Sodom and Gomorrah. Di ba? Oh, kung mayroong 50 na righteous, hindi ko na nag-uusap si Abraham at ang Diyos. Kung may 50, oh, hindi, hindi ko na papatay. 40, hindi na. Oh, 30, hindi, hindi. Pag may 30 na righteous, hindi na 20. Kahit 10 lang, hindi ko papalasan. It is a proof. In Ezekiel, the soul who sins is the one who will die. Yan yung mga places, yung mga scriptures na nagsasabi na yung mga nagloko sila, pinaruro sa hal. However, biblical precedent exists for a generation to suffer for the sins of his ancestors. Meron naman. May mga portion naman sa Bible na sinasabi. May sinasabi naman doon sa Deuteronomy, for instance, For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. Third and fourth generation. Ama, anak, apo. Apo, so apo at apo-apo Sila magsasuffer hanggang doon Ang punishment ng Diyos Third and fourth generation Nakalagay yan sa Deuteronomy However, another angle Part of the reason for this generational suffering Was the ripple effect Inheriting the sinful behavior Ito naman ito naman ang sinasabi dahil yung tata, yung lolo, yung tata yun ang tinuturo eh talagang yun din ang gagawin ng mga anak the ripple effect kung, id- kung idols ang winoworship idols din ang iwoworship ng mga anak yun ang sinasabi naman dito yun ang sinasabi naman dito let us just read Jeremiah 16.12 but you have behaved more wickedly than your father Mukhang hindi yata totoo na dahil doon. Kasi sinisisi yung, yung mga ninuno nila. Pero yung Jeremiah, he was saying, you have behaved more wickedly yung kasalanan yung pinalalala pa ng mga anak ng mga ako. The Babylonian exile, shocking in his scope, marked the end of God's patience. The book of Lamentations is witness to how horrifying that judgment was. Jeremiah did not refrain from asking whether this punishment fit the crime. Sabi ni Jeremiah, Lord, sobra naman yata ito. Sobra naman itong punishment na ginagawa mo sa amin. Yan, ang, yan naman ang mga uh, uh, sinasabi ni Jeremiah. Doon sa Jer- Lamentations chapter 2, same book, sabi niyan, Oh Lord, consider whom have you ever treated like this? Should women eat their offspring? Should priests and prophets be killed in the sanctuary? Yung mahaba yan. So you can read it on your own. Ito yung sinasabi ni Jeremiah. Hindi naman yata. Sobra naman itong marusa. Biray mo. Ah, piniprito yung mga anak pang kain. Pinapakuluan para may sabaw. Yung mga prophets, mga priests, doon pa mismo sa simbahan pinapatang. Indeed, God acknowledged that they had overstepped their role. Sabi, sabi dito, Oo nga, pumayag ang Diyos. Oo nga, sobra nga. Sabi ng Diyos, paparosahan sila sa ginawa na niyan. And you can read us. We can read that in Isaiah 47 and Habakkuk chapter 2. Sa <coughs> verse 8, Slaves rule over us, and there is no one to free us from their hands. Na, na Ano ba nangyari? Bakit is slaves na? Ito. 2 Kings 24, 10, Sino ang hari? Si Juhayakim. Juhayakim. Jihuyakim. Jihuyakim. Siya yung hari. He surrendered to... He surrendered to Babylon. Yan. So, wala na yung hari. Mga royal families yan eh. Royal blood. So, yung Babylon, ah, in... Eh, ginawang king itong si Dikaya. Royal blood pa rin itong si Dikaya. 
Oh, eh, siyang binigay, binigay sa kanya yung pagingari. But re, si Nikaya rebelled against Babylon. So therefore, yun na. Nandun na yung, yung there was a siege for 18 months. Ito si Sidikaya. Natalo na. No more freedom. Pagkatapos, yung mga royal family, dinala na. Sino na ngayon na namamahal sa kanila? Ha? Slaves. Mga slaves. Slaves rule over us. Yeah. No more freedom. Verse 9. We get our bread at the risk of our life because of the sword in the desert. Walang security. Walang security. There may not have been much more to eat than bread. Wala. However, children, pwedeng pagkain, pwedeng tinapay na lang sana. Wala nang ulam. Pero wala talaga. Delikado ang buhay nila. Our skin is hot as an oven. Fever is from... Dahil sa gutom, nagkakasakit na sila. Dahil sa gutom, nag-aapoy sa lagna. Dahil sa gutom, yan ang kalagayan nila. Hunger issue, health issue, health issue. Because of hunger, all kind of ailments come to them. Verse 11, Women have been violated and signed. And virgins in the towns of Judah. Ito pa, ano nang nangyayari? Picture. Ayan o, nire-rape yung mga babae. Wala nang galang, etc., etc. Take note, sa batas ng Diyos, in Deuteronomy, punishment for sexual violence meron nun. However, to the invaders, this means nothing. No honor. No honor. Princess have been hung for their hands. O ito pa, yung mga princess, binibitin sila. Powerlessness. This is to add, you know, uh, public execution to imply great indignity to show that people have no power powerlessness to be elders are shown no respect yan mga matatanda word of wisdom from the people wala na wala na hindi na ginagalang the dishonor afford them was also public execution. Mukhang public execution din ang ginawa sa kanila. Young men toil at billstones. Boys stagger under roads. Ito pa, ito pa yung picture. Continuing yung picture na pinapakita rito. Yung mga lalaki ginagawa yung mga trabaho ng female slaves. Dapat yung mga lalaki nandun sila sa kanto, nagkakantahan, nagaharang, nagigitara, etc. No, they are there doing the work of female slaves. Boys are given work too difficult for them. Malilit pa na bata, pasan-pasan yung mga kao, etc. Yun na yung scenario. Verse 14, The elders are gone from the city gate. The young men have stopped their music. Wala na yung mga elders dun sa city gate. Alam niyo? Wala nang leaders. Wala nang leaders. Ano ba? Ano ba yung city gate? An example. Let us just say an example of this. In Ruth, Book of Ruth. Ano ba nangyari kay Ruth? Nabiyuda. Matay ang asawa niya. Uh, bumalik na sila dun sa, sa Israel. Tapos, mag-aasawa na si Ruth. Ay, yung, mapap, uh, yung mapapangasawa niya, dapat asawa niya yung, yung kapatid o kamag-anak ng kanyang asawa. Pero may mga prioritization niya. So, dinadala yan sa main gate at pinag-uusapan. Legal issue. O, oh, liga, liga. Ikaw yung dapat na mag-asawa dito kay Ruth. Dahil ikaw ang priority, number to priority lang ako. Tinatanong doon, o oh, nandito kayong lahat, makinig kayo. Iwiniwig mo ba yung karapatan mo sa akin? Yan. Oo, oh, winibig ko. Okay. Yun yung kaalagahan nung usapan doon. Wala na. Wala na rin yung mga lalaki nagkakantahan. Wala na. Verse 15. Joy is gone from our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. How utterly hopeless the current situation seems. How utterly hopeless. Yan ang lament, kaya nga lamentation, mourning, cry out to God. Tears. Verse 16. Now we go to the Roman numeral number 2. Confession of our sins. The crown has fallen from our head. 
yung crown, it represents the monarch. However, here, the monarch itself represents Judah. Kung wala na yung hari, wala na yung royal people, the royal line, wala na rin ang Judah. Monarchy itself is Judah. Woe for us, for we have seen, ito na yung 16b. Woe for us, we have seen. It is now a confession. A while ago, sinasabi niyo, kasalanan ng mga ninuno namin. But now, in this verse, here they take responsibility for their own sin. Naamin na nila yung kanilang kasalanan. Verse 17 and 18, Because of this, our hearts are faint. Because of these things, our eyes grow dim for Mount Zion, which lies desolate with jackals prowling over it. Ito na. Weakness of hearts and eyes resulted from the fate of Mount Zion. Ano ba yung Mount Zion? Malupit yan. It has this place at great significance. Diyan nakalagay yung palasyo ni David. Diyan nakalagay yung templo na ginawa ni Haring Solomon. Ngayon, wala na. Jackals, may mga asong ligaw, mga asong ulol, na andon, parang bundok ng basura, nang angain doon yung mga aso, jackals, in the capital city. The presence of jackals, this profound desolation, kawawa, kawawa talaga, napakasakit, kawawang kawawa. Yung dating marangyang Jerusalem, basura na ngayon. May mga asong ulol na doon na kumakain ng basura. Verse 19, You Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. Lord, reign forever. Your throne from generation to generation. Before the time of Moses, etc. God was there. Tignan to, although the Lord has been addressed throughout the chapter, He has not been called out since this verse. Ngayon, ulang ulit binanggit ulit yung pangalan ni Yahweh. Verse 1, binanggit ang pangalan ni Yahweh. After many verses, ngayon na lang ulit binanggit. Why? This absence emphasizes the feelings of distance. Malayo na sa Diyos. Although, this prayer is addressed to God, pero malayo na. Hindi na, hi, wala nang dikit na relationship. To speak of God's eternal throne emphasizes his role as king. It is he who has the authority to decide and impose punishment. Having existed from generation to generation, he knows how unfaithful these generations. Alam ng Diyos, eh, alam mo naman ang buhay namin. Kung ilang generation, andyan ka na. Bago mag-umpisa ang generation namin, andyan ka na. Diba? From the time of Moses until now, it's about 900 years. I don't know how many generations that will be. But God is there and God has witnessed the continuing unfaithfulness of the people. By yet knowing that God's presence can be counted on, can be a source of comfort. Wow! Merong counting comfort dahil andyan pa rin ang Diyos. Why do you always forget us? Why do you forsake us so long? This is an overwhelming pain. Though Jeremiah had offered words of encouragement previously, those seem to be a drop in the bucket in the light of overwhelming pain that continued. Ano ba yung sinabi? Ano ba sinabi yung, yung konting ilaw dun sa Lamentation 322? Tignan lang natin. Lamentation, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Sabi ni Jeremiah dun sa chapter 3. We are in chapter 5. Mayroon pang buhay sa atin. Hindi pa tayo pinatay lahat ng Diyos. in sila, buhay pa sila. Dito, magugutong tayo, pero buhay pa rin tayo. 
we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, each other. The Lord does not forget as people do. His, as to his memory, verse 14. Verse 21. Restore us to yourself, Lord, that we may return. Restore us to yourself. The prayer is now that it will be God who will do the restoration. It will be God who will turn us. Union prayer. Restore us to yourself. Ikaw na ang gumawa dahil hindi namin kaya. Yan ang sabi. Turning himself. They asked God would give his grace by turning himself. The people did not trust themselves to return to the Lord as they should. Certainly, their history proved that they struggled to turn to God on their own. They struggled to turn to God on their own. The ultimate answer to the plea before us is found in the church where we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Romans 12, 21b. Renew our days as a bone. Balik mo na yung dating kalagayan namin. Nagkakasala kami, but still you showered us with blessing. Yun yung sinasabi dyan. The desire was not simply to renew those days, but for transformation by the repentance of the people. Verse 22. The last verse. Unless you have utterly rejected us and are angry with us beyond measure. Unless you have utterly Sana naman hindi ganun. Uh, our advantage, we know, we have the New Testament. But in the time of Jeremiah, this is a real thing for them. After fleeting expression of hope, the people turn once again to what they feared was true. To what they feared was true. Could God be so very angry with them that he would utterly reject them forever? The book ends here on this issue. God does not answer. Jeremiah offered no further hope. Words of hope. The people were not consoled. The wound was not healed. This reality emphasized the death and breath of God's anger. Conclusion. In the midst of our suffering, we know that God is still trustworthy and faithful. However, there are times when we do not feel that He is still trustworthy or faithful. We do not know where God is when we confess and repent of our sins, but do not experience mercy in the consequences. Like those left in a destroyed Jerusalem, all we can see is devastation. The only thing we want is to make sure God sees and knows what we are experiencing. Lamentations help us to find language to tell God the very deep, very real pain that we remember or still experience. The book serves as an invitation to take those things to God. As Paul wrote, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Though the inclusion of lamentations in the Bible may seem odd, it gives evidence of the truth of Paul's assertion. No saints, no famine, no cannibalism, no destruction, no forced labor, no exile could separate God's people from His love. God demonstrated His love in Jesus Christ making a way for all people to turn to the Lord and experience blessings. Through Jesus' great suffering, we have been added to those people who will be freed from all suffering. In Revelation 21.4, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Let sorrow draw you closer to God. Let's pray. 
Lord, thank you very much for this lesson. Thank you very much for teaching us that sorrow and pain experiences that we have can be used so that we can live a life closer to you. We can increase our faith through these experiences and we can be better Christians. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so our last slide, it will already in May, speaking truth to power. Background scripture is 1 Kings, chapter 22. Magandang umaga po at maraming pong salamat.